This is uh, a course numbered 10775, and its name is Administering Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Databases. As you might guess from the title, it's a DBA level course, and it's intended for people who are either new to the role of DBA or who need some refreshers and want to get started in that position. I should note that it's not an upgrade class from pre previous versions of SQL Server. So if you're already very comfortable with the position of being a DBA using an earlier version of SQL, you might be better off taking one of our other courses. This course is more intended for people who are uh, new both to the DBA position and to any version of SQL Server. So with that, I'd like to just walk you through the kinds of things you're going to be learning in this class. First of all, we're going to spend some time talking about the different tools and that are available with SQL Server. And so we will talk about the SQL Server Management Studio, which is a tool where you do most of your work in SQL Server, everything from running scripts like we see here, to using the GUI to do anything from creating a database, to adding security, to auditing, etc. We'll also be looking at a tool called the data tools in which we'll be doing ETL operations. ETL is a process that, or an acronym for a process that uh, is extract, transform, and load. And it's how we simply import and export data from our tables. We'll also be looking at the SQL configuration manager, which is where you would do things like create services for SQL Server and adjust them and set properties for them. We'll look at the SQL Books Online and what's called SQL Documentation in 2012. They changed it from being called Strictly Books Online. Now it's called SQL Documentation, but it's basically the same thing. So in our first module, we'll be spending a lot of time talking about the tools and uh, how to use them. Then we're going to transition into a, a couple of modules on how to do installations. What we're looking at here is the install center. And from here, we have you can see we have all sorts of links to connect and gather information. And then we'll be walking through how to do an actual installation of SQL Server. We'll talk about how you determine hardware and software requirements, what all the prerequisites are, for doing the installation, we'll talk about the different editions and different versions of SQL Server. And by the time you're done with this pair of modules, you will have uh, installed SQL Server, and you'll know how to do pre- and post-installation checks. Then we're going to talk about a series of modules, uh, three of them to be exact, on how to do backup and restores. Obviously, backup and recovery is one of the critical tasks for a DBA, and that's what we'll be covering. We'll talk about how you can do the, the backups, how you can do the restores, and probably just as importantly, how you design a backup and restore strategy to uh, maximize your coverage and minimize your downtime in the case of an event. Then we're going to talk a, a little bit about ETL. So ETL, as I mentioned before, is an acronym for Extract, Transform, and Load. And we'll be using a, a tool called SQL Server Integration Services, which is a product that ships with SQL Server. And you can see here is an example of the way we do SSIS. And it's a, a method for us to go in and do these ETL processes by creating a SQL or S, excuse me, SSIS package. And what you're looking at here is the package itself. Then we're going to be talking about databases in general, how to create them, what the file structure is, how we use them. Uh, and in through all of these things, we'll be talking about best practices, not only how can you do something, but how should you do something. And in general, if it's possible, I will be showing you how to do it both using the GUI 
and using script. Of course, we tend to recommend using the T-SQL language to script everything in the long run. It's a little easier. And if you're taking this course and you don't know any T-SQL language, it's a prerequisite that you know at least some. And so we would recommend that you take a, a prerequisite course for this. Probably the best one is a course on the T-SQL language itself, how to program with T-SQL, course number 10774. If you know a little bit of the T-SQL language or not really sure if you know enough, be assured that in this course during all the labs that whenever you need to type any code, it will be uh, written into the lab book for you and you can just simply copy it from there, although obviously the best thing to do is to understand it. Once that is done, once we've talked about the ETL process and the backup and recovery and the databases themselves, we're going to go through a series of lectures on security. Clearly security is an important issue. All you need to do is read the news and find out what people have done wrong and the consequences of having your data spread throughout the world. But we're going to look at the security of a server. So we'll be looking at, at logins. We'll be looking at credentials. We'll be looking at roles. We'll be looking at uh, encryption. And we'll also be looking at auditing. Auditing is a big component of security, and it also is a legal requirement for many of us to have good audit trails so that we can meet requirements such as HIPAA or FOCA or FICA or Patriot Act or Sarban-Oxley or on and on and on. So we'll be talking about the new and improved ways of doing auditing. We'll also look at security at the database level. So we'll look at security uh, at the database level in, times, in terms of users and roles and schemas and also auditing. Then we're going to talk about automation. So this is basically where we go to make sure that those tasks that need to be done on a regular basis, a scheduled basis, are done and they're done correctly. So we'll be talking about how to create SQL jobs, which are ways of automating certain processes, like backup, like rebuilding indexes, those kinds of things that need to be done on a regular basis, and we have to set them up to run without fail and save ourselves a little bit of effort by letting the computer do that for us. Whenever we talk about jobs, it's important that we also talk about the, to the topic of operators, and alerts and notifications. So those will be included in that discussion. Then we're going to spend some time talking about indexes. Indexes are an important part of a table structure that allow uh, reading of data from the tables to be done in a, a rapid manner. So indexes are pretty critical and we'll spend some time talking about clustered indexes and non-clustered indexes. And if you don't know what those are, that's what class is for. You're going to learn. We'll also talk about database consistency. So we'll be talking about using the DBCC program to check the logical and the physical integrity of our databases. In that discussion, we'll talk about what happens when my database does become corrupt. How do I deal with that? And how do I know that maybe just a little bit of the database is corrupt? How do I know that? So we'll be covering all of that information. We're going to wrap up the course by talking about how to trace the database. In other words, how to record live activity that's going on in the database. And then we'll talk about how to measure performance in the database the physical and logical performance of our database and our server. And then we'll finally show you how to combine those two pieces of information so that we can understand what is the impact of our activity in terms of our hardware and what are our limiting bottlenecks and how do we go about improving them. Now in addition to that, that's information that we will cover in the five days of this course. In addition to that, there is some take-home material for you to study on your own. 
and those topics include how do you manage multiple servers? Everybody's being asked to do more with less these days. And so how do we get that done? How do I manage more and more and more servers and more and more databases without losing our minds? Well, that topic is going to be discussed and show you some of the new things that Microsoft has come out with the ability to manage multiple servers at a time. Also, there's a discussion on troubleshooting that you'll take home with you, uh, talking, dealing with troubleshooting methodologies and how to apply those to SQL Server. And then finally, there's a topic on SQL Server high availability that would include topics about mirroring and replication, some things we've had around for a long time, and also the new SQL always on configurations, which is a, an ability to have to take advantage of clustering like capabilities built into SQL Server. Hey, I really hope that you will come take this course. It's a very fun class, very informative. <clears throat> of all the classes we teach, this one is, is uh, the most useful, I think, in terms of a DBA position. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this short video, and I hope you have a great afternoon. And come see me sometime. Take a class from us here at Quick Start, and I promise you won't be disappointed. You'll walk away with an awful lot of information.